give you a little bit of guidance as for what we're going to be doing here today. Um, actually, first and foremost, can we please turn off all cell phones, ringers, all those types of things uh, so we don't have any of those distractions. Uh, as for the news conference, we'll have Coach Holder start us off with an opening statement uh, talking about the park. And then from there, uh, we will be taking questions. What we ask is we have uh, McKenzie. Where's McKenzie? She's got, uh, she'll have the microphone and hand them to you. We just ask that you raise your hands and uh, wait for her to come to you with the microphone before we go ahead and start asking questions. Um, one question that I could answer before we get started is why are we here? Why are we in the tennis center? We're in the tennis center because this is as close as we can get you to the baseball stadium where you'd be able to go right out there and take photos of the site uh, right after we're done here. Uh, and just a reminder for the media, we're going to have a facility tour of the soccer stadium as well so you can connect with Wade McWhorter uh, in the back of the room as we finish. So uh, with that, Coach Holder, we'll turn it over to you. Uh, thank you, Gavin. I'd like to welcome everybody. A uh, special day for Oklahoma State University and athletics in the Stillwater community. Uh, I'd like to thank a lot of people, first off, and uh, first and foremost, our president, Burns Hargis. He couldn't be here today, but if you ever doubt his influence and impact on our campus and our university, just take a tour. If you hadn't been here in a few years or a few months or even a few days, it's pretty spectacular what's happened, the transformation of our, our campus and our university. So. Uh, great leadership from him, and I uh, treasure his friendship as well. I'd also like to thank our Board of Regents. Uh, uh, without them, none of this would happen, and I know we've got at least one region here today, Calvin Anthony, and uh, to Calvin's credit, he's also one of the major donors in this baseball stadium. Uh, he's there at every game, sitting right above dugout on third baseline, and he's already told us he expects to get those same seats when the new stadium's open, and with the contribution he made, that should be no problem, Calvin. Uh, we also had another regent that's all in on this, Joe Hall. Uh, he gave a major gift as well, and I appreciate uh, his contribution, as all the regents have done for us in the past for other projects. Um, I don't know if my wife's here today or not. She was kind of iffy on uh, playing golf or making it in for the, for the announcement. I don't want to interfere with her golf, so if she's here today, thank you very much, Robbie. And then uh, I want to I thank Rick Cooper and his father, Bert. Bert passed away several years ago. We refer to him as Superman. Uh, we're so blessed to have the Cooper family and W.W. Steel. They're the, the best of all the steel fra fabricators in all the world. If you can't, you can't name a big project in our country that they're not a part of or haven't been a part of from uh, Jerry Jones Stadium in Dallas to uh, Madison Square Garden to uh, the largest construction project in the history of our country that's going on right now in New York City, which is Hudson Yards. If you haven't heard about it, you should Google it up and learn a little bit about it. And Rick Cooper gave us a lot of advice, value engineering, expertise. Uh, he worked hand in hand with our contractor, Manhattan Construction, to get us uh, the best stadium that you could get for the for the smallest amount of money, even though it's a, a large amount when you get to the final number. Um, I'd also like to thank my good friend Bob Howard down in Oklahoma City for keeping me humble every day. Uh, it's good to have a friend like that. And I'd also like to thank Boone Pickens. Uh, people say, well, this is a, a baseball stadium. It doesn't have anything to do with football. But uh, years ago, I, I had put a number on it, maybe 2,000. Uh, culminated in 2005 with a huge gift of $165 million, built a football stadium and transformed our football program. And we have one of the better stadiums in college football and Boone Pickens Stadium. We're really proud of that. We would have never had it without the generosity of Mr. Pickens. But it went far beyond that. And he's the one that had the vision for the Athletic Village and put $45 million of his hard-earned money and acquiring the 100 acres that uh, became the blank canvas for our athletic village. Um, and then all the things that he's done for academics. And just like I mentioned about Burns Hargis, if you doubt the influence of Boone Pickens, just take a drive around. I'd hate to think what our campus, our university, our athletic department would look like if it wasn't for Boone Pickens. And he didn't stop with the 165 million. I got so excited the day we had that announcement when he closed it by saying, and this won't be my last gift, and it wasn't, and they were all big. So thank you, Big Boone Pickens, with someone like that on our team. All things are possible. He also inspired others, 
others to give, and his good friend Sherman Smith and his son Will Smith provided the funding for the Sherman Smith Training Center, inspired Mike and Ann Greenwood to help build this tennis complex, inspired Neil Patterson, who unfortunately passed away this last summer with his wife, um, to build a soccer stadium, and now we're here for the baseball stadium, so this won't be the last thing we do, but it's very, very significant. Probably bigger than anything we thought we'd ever build or do for baseball. Um, the, I guess the first question can be, why would you build a stadium of the magnitude that you're about to see? And uh, it's pretty simple to attract the best and the brightest baseball players from all over the world, uh, to bring them to Stillwater, to train them, to educate them, to teach them how to dream big and make those dreams come true. So that's the primary reason. If you want to have a great baseball team, I don't care how great your leadership, how great your coaching is, you better have some talent to work with. So make no mistake about it, this is about getting into the game and attracting the best and the brightest, as I said, from all around the world. Uh, we also want to attract young families to the stadium. Um, Josh Holliday, one of the great stories is how he was raised at Alley P. Reynolds. Um, he grew up there. He has fond memories from there. I think it's a lot of what happened in that stadium is responsible for the man that he grew to be and the leader he became. And we want that to happen for more young people. Um, it's also necessary, I think, to build a loyal and passionate fan base. It takes more than just a team. It's nice to have a nice facility that shows that you're committed to your program. And we expect to to field or build a stadium that'll attract that and have a seriously uh, a significant home field advantage for our team. And we also you want to use this stadium to unite the community, uh, bring it closer to our campus, to our university, to our athletic program. We want this to be the place to be, the happening spot in the spring and early summer every year in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And, there's no reason that we can't fill this for every game just from our community. Next question, how did we get it done? Took the work of a lot of people. Uh, I take my hat off to Larry Reese and Matt Grantham and Sean Taylor. Uh, we've got a small team of fundraisers, but they do incredible things. Uh, who would have thought we could sell out 123 suites in our football stadium? Who would have thought we could sell every club seat close to 4,000 of them in our football stadium. Uh, there are gonna be suites and club seats to sell in this new facility. And we've raised a lot of money and we could have never done it without them. Uh, also, you've to inspire people to give, you've gotta have a great story to tell. I don't care how great a salesman you are, if you've got a lousy product, good luck. So uh, we have a great product and it's based on the tradition of our, our program goes back for decades. I think we've had baseball here for 109 years. We won one national championship in 1959 under the leadership of Toby Green. Um, Mr. Iba, a lot of people don't know this, he was our baseball coach at one time in addition to being the basketball coach. Um, when I was in school, uh, Chet Bryan was the coach and then he handed the baton off to Gary Ward I think everybody's pretty familiar with what Gary Ward accomplished here. Uh, he's now in the College Baseball Hall of Fame because of it. Uh, 16 straight uh, Big 8 tournament championships, seven straight trips to the College World Series from 1981 to 1987. Uh, what a great coach he was. And assistant coach on that team, Tom Holliday, who uh, I'd like to point out, he hit for the OSU cycle. And what would that be? Well, in my mind, that would be he served as assistant coach. He served as the head coach. He's the father of our current coach, Josh Holliday. And every home game that's televised, he's the color commentator for the broadcast or the telecast. So he's hit for the cycle. Uh, great contribution from him and his wife. Uh, they're part of uh, the real fiber that makes OSU a special place in the baseball program, what it is today. And then also Frank Anderson, another great coach we had. And then today, but between Josh Holliday and Rob Walton, you've got true, really great coaches. I consider them both head coaches. Uh, both of them played baseball here. Rob pitched in uh, four College World Series. 
He won four conference championships. Uh, those two together, I don't know how many uh, coaches in today's game actually played in a College World Series and coached and won, but those two guys did it, and they're both on our staff. And as long as they're here, we got a great story to tell, great leadership. Um, and also the, the generosity of our people, uh, it's, I mean, it's awe-inspiring. I can think back in the 1990s uh, when I was coaching, you know, I think the, the general consensus of Oklahoma State University, a lot of great people, it's a land-grant institution. Most of us came from uh, poor beginnings, and unfortunately, we just don't have the, the financial wherewithal to do things at a high level. And fast forward to today, and you look at the amount of money that we've raised and the kind of facilities that we've built all over this camp campus, it's awe-inspiring. Um, I was trying to put a pencil to it. It's north of 400 million, getting close to 500 million, maybe more than that, that we've raised since Boone Pickens stepped up to the plate. Uh, and we, we talked to a lot of people to get to the promised land on this baseball stadium. Originally, when uh, the athletic village was born as an idea between myself and Boone Pickens, I thought you could probably build a first-class baseball stadium for 20 million. Then I guessed higher at 40 million. In uh, November, we had a meeting at WW Steel between uh, Brick Cooper and Craig Abbott from Manhattan Construction Company and Jim Hassenbeck, our architect, uh, Joe Hall from the Board of Regents, and we looked at the final bid numbers, and it was 60 million. And I thought we'd done a pretty good job to figure out some way to scratch together 50, and gosh, to be 10 million short, and needing to get this thing off the ground, uh, and not wanting to borrow any money. I mean, what do you do? So immediately we started talking about how do you value engineer this? How do you cut? What do you cut? And about an hour and a half into that discussion, I just called time out. And I said, guys, um, this isn't about compromise. This is, this is about being great. And you're never going to be the greatest or the best if you start compromising. So let's quit talking about com uh, cutting and let's figure out how to raise another $10 million. If it costs $60 million, then that's what we'll have to raise. So the final tab uh, for construction from this day forward should be right at $60 million. That's what the bids say. Uh, probably cost a little bit more than that. There's got to be something out there that we haven't thought about that'll crop up. And I'm confident if that happens, we'll have another donor that'll step up and help us pay for it. Uh, I think the all-in will be $75 million. How do I get that number? Uh, Boone Pickens, as I said, spent around $45 million of his money buying the the canvas, the blank canvas for this athletic village. If you just look at the land mass that we're going to take up with this baseball stadium, we're probably at about 10 million of that. And then probably 5 million in design and uh, schematics to get to this point. So that 15 million of sunk cost plus the 60 million that we're about to spend going forward gets us to a grand total of $75 million. And I think that It'll be well worth it. Uh, today it seems expensive. I think it won't be very far in the future that we'll all understand what a bargain it was and we'll be thankful that we didn't cut any corners. Um, in closing, I'd just like to say that, and I think everybody understands it, this, this that uh, OSU is a special place where all things are possible, uh, a place where no dreams are too big, a place where every day when I walk down the hallways of gallagher Iba or in Boone Pickens Stadium, I, I rub shoulders with the best of the best. I mean, people that have been to the pinnacle of their sport, John Smith, for example, I could make an argument he's the greatest wrestler, amateur wrestler of all time in the United States of America, certainly one of the greatest in the world. So uh, he's just one example of what we run into every day. Um, this is going to be a new day for OSU baseball, and it's going to be amazing to watch this complex come to life. I can't wait for opening today and to see that first pitch out there. And uh, I'll close with a couple of one quote and one a couple of comments. Uh, <clears throat> the quote I heard was a couple of days ago or a month ago, 
uh, driving back from meeting with a donor. And uh, the quote goes like this, if youth knew, if age could, uh, think about that a minute. And I say this all the time, what you dream about, what you think about, what you talk about, what you work hard to accomplish, that is what will happen. And if I could talk to Mike Holder at 19 years of age, that's what I would tell him. And I think that's what education, higher education, and what coaching is all about. So uh, there's going to be some great things happen in this baseball stadium. And it's going to be because of the feeling you get when you walk in and you see the grass, and you smell the grass, and you watch our players, the way they play the game and represent us, and you look at our coaching staff, and you look around the stadium at all the bright and shiny faces, and the joy and the happiness exists that on that playing field 33 or 30 times a year, it's a place that you want to be and that you would never, ever miss a game in Stillwater. So with that, I'll close and I think open it up for questions. Uh, hopefully there will be a bunch. Josh, this has been talked about for a long time. Just what does this day mean to you? Oh, it's uh, it's kind of amazing. It's, it's yeah, I'm, you know, when I... First day, I think it was about three weeks ago, I actually took this, uh, this road home one day and saw the construction fence up and saw some big yellow tractors and thought, wait a minute, that actually something going on right there. And uh, it kind of hit me that this is, this is all coming together. It's all happening. And obviously when the official word came together and, and, and the date was set to, to share this with everyone, it's, um, it's really remarkable. I mean, it's, um, it's been worth it every step of the way. It's, uh, it's been a great uh, lesson to see how something like this occurs. Um, it wouldn't have happened without uh, amazing support, uh, amazing generosity, as Coach spoke about. Um, but his vision, uh, this wouldn't have happened without him. And when you're a coach and, and you, you're at your university, uh, all you want to know is that you're going to be given a chance to, to try to do something and be the best at it. And from day one, Coach Holder has, has made that opportunity real for us. And he made it real uh, when we hired Rob and Michelle. He's made it real with the kids and how we train them and take care of them. Um, he's made it real with the stadium. And I tell you, uh, it's amazing. And when you look at this facility and you consider it for all that it's going to be, um, he's given us a chance to compete for championships and be in a first-class setting each and every day. And so it's a... Uh, really remarkable moment and one that, you know, obviously we're very fortunate to be a part of this, but uh, truly amazing, uh, very inspiring. Josh, Coach Holder mentioned the fact that Ali P was so influential in your life. I know you want to make a lot of memories at this new stadium, but how tough will it be to, to say goodbye to Ali P? Well, you'll never say goodbye to it. Uh, you'll take with, with you all the great moments in time, which is what tradition and sports all about. And, um, you know, you, you just you take all the moments that occurred there, which allowed this to actually become a reality. And that's the truth. The, the great teams, the great moments, the winning, the, the, the building of people who then went on to have great successful lives, who many of which have helped us make this new stadium a reality. Uh, that facility has, has served us so well, uh, allowed us to realize we can be the best, and, and we'll take that with us, and we'll take those moments and players and coaches that made that place light up for so many years, and we'll celebrate them each and every day and uh, welcome them back to see our new home. And uh, that's, just part of, that's just part of developing. It's part of time, and it's just part of you know, evolving. So uh, those moments never leave. They're permanent. They're in your mind. They're in your heart. If you played there, they're uh, they're in your photos when you look back and, and, and laugh at how tight the uniforms used to fit or 
uh, how much hair you used to have or how much skinnier you used to be. You, you never leave the moments. Uh, but what you take with you is, is, a, is a future. And all those guys that made that place special, they want this for this program. And, and we're going we're gonna to celebrate the heck out of the past because it's part of who we are. But we're really excited about what we can become. What are the actual plans for Alley P? What's going to happen to it in 2020? Um, Coach, I'll yield to you on exactly what the plans are. Alley P in the future? Plans? You know, the, the, we've thought about that a lot, but I don't think anyone's made a decision yet. Uh, there's a lot of options out there from keeping it and you have it kind of repurpose or, you know, tear it down. I, I think if we tore it down, we'd probably do something similar or. Uh, do our own concept to what they did at Omaha with Rosenblatt. I th understand they still have home plate there and a couple of foul poles. Who knows? Anybody who's got any good ideas, we're open to suggestion. Mike, does the uh, stadium have a name yet, or what's the process going to be like of revealing the name of the stadium? Would you repeat that? I... Does the uh, stadium have a, a name yet, or what's the process going to be in terms of revealing the name of the stadium? Yeah, for right now, it's just Oklahoma State University Baseball Stadium. Uh, you know, we, we haven't talked to anything about the donors yet, and that's because some, several of our major benefactors at this particular moment in time, prefer to be anonymous. We're honoring those wishes. Hopefully, um, at some point in the future, that'll change. Maybe we can have another great press conference and talk about some more happy things that have happened. But as of right now, we're going to keep that low key. Uh, just know that we've raised the money to build this. Uh, there'll be a little bit of short-term borrowing because you have to bridge the gap between pledges being made and pledges being paid. But we don't have any problem uh, chinning that bar internally, thanks to the cooperation of the OSU Foundation. So we've got a great team of people here at the university that work together to make this sort of thing happen. And uh, at some point in time, yeah, perhaps we will put someone or change the name of that, but not today. You talked about the um, celebrating the past. Is there any... It, possibility for plaques or statues of former players, kind of like what you have at LAP now? Oh, it'll be, the history will be well celebrated. I mean, when you see this stadium and, and all the detail that Jim and his team have put in and all the thought that has gone into um, our goals, uh, you know, to target our community, to target our student body, uh, to train our players, to, to create a game day atmosphere similar to uh, what we see every Saturday and every time Gallagher Iba opens its doors uh, to chronicling the history in the past, uh, that's going to be done in such a first class manner that anyone that ever has worn this uniform will walk back in that stadium and realize how much they're valued. So uh, this is such a, a well thought out, well planned, uh, comprehensive um, stadium that, that our history and the individuals that created it and all the great moments will be on display both in the stadium and certainly inside on the walls. Uh, where our players every single day will walk past those moments and remember how this place was built and, and draw inspiration from that. So uh, we're going to celebrate the heck out of all the great players and moments and titles that we've won over the years. Josh, I know you're seeking both something long-lasting and unique. What elements in particular are you most excited about? All of it. I mean, I, I can't tell you... The best way I could describe it to you is like this. When you play baseball or coach baseball or are raised in baseball, there's not a ballpark you go into that you don't say, oh, that's pretty cool. And sometimes you think it's pretty cool because there's an old scoreboard. Or sometimes you think it's pretty cool because uh, somebody once played there. Or sometimes there's a, a, a train track and the train goes by. Well, everything and every time that I had a chance to walk in a ballpark, whether it was in the SEC, the ACC, the Pac-12, the Big 12, and Rob's experiences across baseball, um, when you walked away from a ballpark and said, wouldn't it be cool to have something like that? But we took every element or every uh, scenario that we've come across, whether it was the way the fans interacted, where the students sat, the way the families were involved, 
the training piece, obviously, with uh, how to build our players each and every day with, with batting cages and practice areas. And we, we went and sat down and said, this is the best version I've ever seen of this. How can we incorporate this into our plan? And uh, with Jim's help and, and Josh, um, we designed a stadium that I think has, uh, wouldn't it be cool to have that in every single corner of it? And um, we thought our way through it as a player. We thought our way through it as coaches. We looked at it as fans. We looked at it as baseball purists who loves to come to the game and just watch the game. We thought our way through it as a member of the OSU student body who's looking for something fun to do that wants to go out and, and be active. Um, and we looked at it through the lens of the Stillwater community and young families and, and little kids because that's baseball uh, and that's college baseball. And that's how uh, stadiums like this are full each and every time you suit up is because you engage all the different elements uh, of a true fan base. And as I said, I want every little kid who has a birthday in the spring to have it at this stadium. I want every family looking for something to do to come share the day with us. And I want every uh, young baseball player in the country that, that wants to be coached, cared for, and grown to want to come do it here because when they look around, they see that this is, this is the very best of the best. And so that was the, that was the mindset we took when we designed this. And as coach said, you know, shoot for the stars. Let's, let's do this, do this right. Let's do this in a way that um, you think big, you dream big, and, and you try to build the best college baseball program in the country. And so that was the vision behind how we went about designing it. And I, I think all the elements of it are fabulous. You guys are aiming for 2020, and obviously timelines can fluctuate. Is the hope spring of 2020 or fall of 2020? I believe that's spring of 2020, correct, Coach? Yeah, that's correct. Yes. Yeah, Josh, uh, a big part of the history and the personality of Allie P is the dimensions, which I'm still not sure I know what the, the true dimensions are in, in the outfield fences. Looking at the diagram here, it looks like you've got a shorter porch to left, a longer to right. Do you know what your field dimensions will be and how much foul territory you'll have in the new park? Oh, absolutely. Um, we started with the field itself. I mean, when you design something like this, uh, you'd be shocked at the amount of detail necessary for, for Jim and his team to build around. We designed a stadium that would reward good baseball. We want to reward good pitching with dimensions that allow you to pitch successfully to certain parts of the field. We want to reward good hitting where a ball hit well, has a chance to, to go out. Um, and we wanted to build dimensions that would prepare our team for the unique setting that the College World Series has played in. And, and TD Ameritrade Field is a, a very big ballpark. And the style of play to win in that stadium is, is very unique. Uh, there are no wind-blown home runs. There are no fly balls to the middle of the field that return much of a reward on offense. And so... Uh, considering our wind patterns, considering our, our current stadium and what we've grown accustomed to there, uh, knowing how our winds blow early in the season, knowing how the winds blow late in the season, uh, we came up with dimensions that we think um, keep the ball fair to left field so that the south wind doesn't blow any fly ball over the fence, provide a big spacious area in center field to reward excellent defense and timely hitting, um, and to create maybe a, a spot in right field where uh, a really good left-handed hitter could come in and, and do some serious damage to certain spaces. And uh, I think we built a balanced field, which is what the College World Series built on. And yet we put some of our own dimensions to it to fit still water and to fit our wind and, and to kind of make sure the ballpark plays good. You want to walk out there and say, um, this field plays fair. And, and we want to be able to recruit to the idea that it's, it's, a, it's a beneficial environment for a hitter. It benefits a pitcher and it rewards um, elite level defense and I think Jim has the exact square footage or the uh, linear footage to the fence in the different locations that he can share with you. Uh, from, for Jim, from an architecture standpoint, what makes this stadium special? Well, there's a, there's a number of things I think that make this a very special uh, uh, complex. Uh, it, it had to meet certain goals. Number one was to develop players. Number two was the fan experience. And then number three, Josh hit on, was uh, prepare the team for Omaha. Um, I've got kind of a, a, a list here that I'll, I'll just kind of read quickly of just the amenities. And there are many, many of them, so I'm just kind of hitting the high points. Um, 
but after this, if you want more detail, I'll be glad to visit with you. Uh, first of all, it sits at a major intersection, which is a little unusual for a collegiate ball ballpark. It sits at the corner of Washington and McElroy, as you know. Uh, it forms a new north gateway to Oklahoma State University campus, and that makes this building special because of that, and that needed to be taken into account. The facility needs to look like and feel like an OSU modified Georgian uh, piece of architecture. I mean, it's important. Oklahoma State University has a very unique feel throughout the entire campus, and we're trying to keep that feel throughout the athletic village as it grows uh, with the different venues. Uh, it has a 360 degree concourse. You can walk completely around this ballpark and watch the game at any point in time. There's nothing between your walk and the field, which is very, very unusual and maybe the only ballpark at the collegiate level where you can do that. Uh, there are two main entrances. There's one at home uh, plate, at home base, and then there's a center field entrance. And that center field entrance is attached to over 600 car parking lot, which I know Ali P today lacks a little bit of, of that type of facility, and we've taken that into account. This ballpark has a glass batter's eye, uh, which is like no other. It's, it's a dark piece of glass, but you can still see through it. It'll allow people to actually watch a ball game from straight behind the pitching mound, and that is different than any other place you'll, you'll be. Um, all fill, filled, it seats 6,000 to 6,500 people, and it's expandable to about 8,000. It has 13 suites. It has 400 premium seats. In the outfield, there are 1,500 seats on five-foot deep terraces that are right uh, just on the other side of the outfield fence. Uh, we have tailgating tents. The outfield is lined on the concourse with tailgating tents. Those are to encourage people to come early and stay late and enjoy the game of baseball, both from watching warm-ups to celebrating the victory after. Uh, we have a special student section. Uh, that student section has been pushed close to the field. It's down the third base line, so it, it's cranked so that it has a great view of the infield that also the top couple of rows have uh, low seating, uh, which is, again, kind of unique for a student section especially. Again, we're trying to encourage students to come early, hang out, have fun, and uh, just enjoy the game of baseball. Uh, we have family areas, family-friendly areas. We have some family tents down the first baseline, and behind those are playground areas for toddlers and young kids. Moms and dads can watch and enjoy the game, but still keep an eye on their, on their little ones as they uh, you know, just enjoy what little kids enjoy. Um, we have uh, a 2,000, approximately a 2,000 square foot video board uh, down the left field line. It's attached to an indoor batting uh, cage facility. Uh, I mentioned that player development was one of the goals, and this has a very unique feature in that Josh and Rob and the rest of the coaching staff can pretty much stand in one area, and they have hitting, pitching, fielding, their classroom, it's all right there, almost like a hub of a wheel. And that, uh, to my understanding, is very, very unique uh, for a collegiate ballpark and will help them and help the players in their development. And this is designed around day-to-day -day practice. Uh, it's right adjacent to a 26,000 uh, square foot clubhouse uh, that houses the locker room and training room. So this is a, a wonderful and very special facility. Josh, with so many new college baseball stadiums going with artificial turf, how important was it for you guys here at Oklahoma State to, to go with the natural? Well, it was our preference all along to have natural grass. And with the amazing crew we have here to take care of it, um, it would be uh, you know almost criminal not to have that beautiful grass. We looked at artificial turf only from the standpoint of would it make sense because of weather and whatnot. But with modern drainage, 
technology, uh, with our heritage as a university, and with the purity of a, of a grass and dirt field, our feeling is we're training these boys to someday play in the major leagues. And Major League Baseball is played, for the most part, on dirt and grass. And uh, there's still nothing like a perfectly manicured baseball field to, to wake you up each and every day and walk out there and inspire you to work. And it's just uh, it's, it's too, mar too much of a... Uh, of a, a pride uh, item for us. It's too much of a, a baseball purity that we didn't want to uh, sacrifice or compromise on, as Coach said earlier. So in the operations center, I know there's going to be a space for um, former baseball players where they can continue their professional training as they're finishing the degree programs. And I know you all have mentioned um, how important the tradition is with the baseball program. How important do you think it is just to keep those guys involved and help them on their way to their professional careers when they're not playing at OSU anymore? Um, it's a huge consideration. Uh, it's, it's why we designed a space particularly for those guys. I want every one of these guys to, to pursue their pro careers and chase that dream uh, until the very, very end. Uh, but in saying that, we want them to finish school. We want them to pursue that dream, but also have uh, a secondary vision of who they're going to become when baseball comes to an end. And to welcome guys back in the offseason, to, to train, to give them a home, to let them finish school, uh, to let them realize this will be their home every single day for however long they want it to be. Uh, was a big part of our consideration and mainly for them to feel welcomed, that I have a place to go. And when you're a minor league player, you, you don't have anywhere to go. You don't have a home. Um, you're in between always, hoping that the next stop on the, on the journey is a higher one. So we want our guys to know they'll always have a home. We want them to know that the school is 100% behind them, finishing their school, getting their degree, and training their bodies and preparing for professional baseball at the highest level. And uh, that's, that's going to be a big part of what I want all these guys to, to, to leave here knowing, and, and I want them to come back and take advantage of it. Coach Holder, baseball's been on the list for a long time, and now that the ball's rolling for baseball and soccer, do you have any ideas for what could be next, possibly, in terms of renovations or what? so what? Uh, absolutely. We, we've got a commitment to, to uh, on the part of the athletic department and, uh, to build an indoor track. We want to build one, the quality you can host a national championship, national indoor. Uh, do we have that funded? No. Do we have a definitive plan? No. But we've decided to do it, so it's inevitable it'll happen. And then the next sport we're going to address is wrestling. Uh, unfortunately, I think in a lot of ways since 1938 when they built Gallagher Hall, we've done nothing for wrestling. We've taken it for granted. We've just assumed that it would be the best in all the world. It's won 34 national championships kind of in spite of us. And that needs to change and we need to make a statement that OSU wrestling is the king of the hill and uh, we plan on doing something to, to make that, you know, give a physical manifestation to that commitment, to that responsibility. When, that, when will that happen? I don't know. Uh, sooner the better, uh, but That'll probably go over there on the east side of Gallagher Iba Arena somewhere. We've got that nice hedge fill area. Uh, what will it cost? I don't know. Probably be pretty expensive. But if you can't raise money for OSU wrestling, you're not a very good fundraiser. I mean, people get emotional about that. It, there's a responsibility to that sport. I, I tell people all the time, you can make an argument that we are who we are as an institution because of what Art Griffith and Ed Gallagher did as wrestling coaches here to show that you can be the best in the whole world at something right here on our campus in Stillwater, Oklahoma. So we owe a debt of gratitude that far transcends just the national championships won by wrestling. And then once we get that done, we'll probably go back around and it'll be time to, to put a, a, a brighter face on everything that we've already done. You know, the, I, I thought when I first took over as athletic director that build something and that's, that's the end of it. No, that's the beginning. The expensive part is maintaining and taking care of those facilities. So we'll probably need to go in and refresh everything that we've done up to this time. Josh, how much did you pick the minds of, of former players in, in designing this stadium? Um, uh, former players, maybe not as much as, as um, 
other coaches or, or just other people that have gone through this design process themselves in recent years. Um, we obviously sat down with Jim and, and Josh and did a lot of brainstorming about our own unique needs here. Um, <clears throat> I think when you're trying to consider what a student athlete at OSU needs, we got a pretty good insight on that as coaches having, having done that ourselves. Um, so trying to relate to our kids what their needs are, their priorities. Um, we want to train them the best. We want to take care of them the best. We want to build a team. We want to educate them. We want to create spaces where that's uh, easy to do and, and convenient. And, and we were able to do that. And um, I think that um, it, was, it was more of a brainstorm of not just where we're at now, but where are we going to be in the future and what's next? I, I don't think you can necessarily uh, think ahead and, and be where you want to be if you're just focusing on, you know, the now. you got to ask questions. What's the next trend? What are the things that we're going to want to be able to do? What's this going to look like in 10 years? And build something that's going to have a long, strong uh, impact on what you're doing. And that was the mindset we took. And so everything we did was, was obviously to train the guys in the current uh, moment, but also be able to train them into the future with modern technology and, and, and design and space uh, that we're going to need. So, um, you know, we, we toured the finest spring training complexes in America. Uh, we looked at some major league stadiums. We looked at college stadiums. We took a lot of things into consideration to learn from the work of others uh, and then to try to tailor that to something really uh, unique and special on this campus. Obviously, this is going to be Cowboy Stadium, but is there any hope to possibly repurpose it for high school state tournaments, uh, uh, being able to have it as a venue for other things as well? The, the new stadium? Oh, we'd love to host uh, marquee events for young people across our state. I'd love for a state championship uh, mindset for a young man to be, I want to win a state championship in Stillwater on that field. Sure, there's there's all kinds of great potential to bring people to our campus and celebrate this facility and, and have people want to come. Uh, we're going to need a full-time tour guide to show people around this place, and, and we want it that way. We want to share with people uh, this awesome, awesome stadium, and we want to share with them the story of the people who helped make it happen, and, and we're going to do that each and every day with great pride. So there uh, be all kinds of opportunities to, to let people experience this facility. Jim, Jim Hassenbeck mentioned the tailgating tents in the outfield. I really believe that we have the potential on football Saturdays for the baseball stadium to be a real mecca for tailgating. Uh, we've got that artificial turfed uh, infield that we could use for youngsters to run around and play. And I don't know if we could turn everybody loose on the, in, the, 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 re, the natural grass, but certainly with the big video board, and the sound system we'll have, that could be a happening place on Saturday afternoons in the fall. So now, there's infinite number of possibilities. And when you spend this much on a stadium, you should be looking ways to use it and show it off. Josh, how much does this excitement and optimism kind of refresh or add to your competitive drive? More than you can possibly imagine. Um, it's just, it, I mean, I guess it, it, the hardest thing to put into words is just, you know, I grew up here as a little kid and, and ran around every day doing everything from picking up trash to shagging home runs to cutting the grass and, and, and admiring the players. And, you know, you just think about how many days you've walked in those front gates and how what's gone on inside those gates has impacted your life. And then you know, um, to be able to be part of uh, helping build the next chapter in this, this program's history, um, to be able to do it and have a chance to do it at uh, such a spectacular level and have an, a chance to have input and be part of that, um, it's just kind of hard to believe. I mean, there's some days you just have to pinch yourself and say, this is really, this is really happening and, and this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to be part of doing something really spectacular. And so... Obviously very lucky and blessed, but um, it, uh, it is inspiring. There is a responsibility, and I hope our players are listening, um, to be the best, to do what's necessary to be the best, to make 
the tough choices that the people who are the best at what they do make um, and to make people proud of what they're going to see in this field or on this field and inside that stadium, you can't take that lightly. That's a, it's an amazing gift to be given, a chance to be the best at something. And this stadium is going to uh, it better inspire everyone that walks in, in those gates each and every day to live up to that um, because it's going to have that kind of power and that kind of impact. Yeah, Mike, to your right, Mike, Mike, to your right, right, right here, here. Yeah, you, uh, you, we were talking about grass, but then you mentioned artificial turf, and so I got confused. Where's the, uh, what is the artificial turf again? Well, we have two uh, infields, the main infield inside the stadium that will be dirt with grass outfield and uh, infield, and then we're going to have a practice uh, infield around this training center we talked about, and that'll be artificial turf. So it can be used 365 days a year. I guess the best of both worlds. Josh, you know for a while that this was coming. How long have you been using it as a recruiting pitch? Well, um, not not to the extent of you know um but you might think i mean obviously we knew this was a goal we knew this was part of our vision and where it was going but um our our main our main focus with the kids has been the relationships and coaching and, and team concept that you're going to be a part of uh with our intentions to build a state-of-the-art facility in the future and um you know we knew this was coming at some point we didn't know exactly when that uh, a project of this size could could culminate, but uh, that's happening now. And I think from this point forward, um, to be able to to be able to put more of a firm date on it allows you in recruiting to to share that in a in a really um, exciting and, and open ended way with recruits and their families. But um, we would have loved for this group or the previous groups to have been in it. But timing and 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 all those things they have a way of working themselves out. And uh, I'm proud to say that each and every day we walk into the stadium we're in, we have a chance to be great there too. So, um, but yeah, it's going to be a, a big part of, of of how we're viewed. It's going to spark and stimulate interest in what we're doing here that uh, uh, will help us in, in many many ways. And um, I think when kids and families see it, they're going to be uh, they're going to be blown away by it. 